Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this session about uh, native desktop styling with the Kit Quick Controls 2. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I will talk about our plans uh, uh, for the future here at the Qt Company UI team for creating desktop application with Controls 2. And I will also show what we have done so far for the upcoming Qt 6 release. And I'll even throw in a little demo in the end. And the short summary is that we plan to ramp up support for writing desktop applications with Controls 2 using both QML and uh, C++. So, OK, let's take a brief look at the current situation. Uh, Controls 1 was our first go at providing a UI framework using QML. Uh, all the controls were more or less written 100% in QML without much C++. And at that time, uh, QML was pretty new for everyone, also for us, which meant that we didn't really know what to expect with regards to performance. So the styling API ended up being quite inefficient by design, I would say. It created a lot of queue objects and had many fat delegates that used JavaScript introspections and bindings to style the controls. Uh, on top of this, we had a linking dependency to widgets to offer native styling and widget-based dialogues from QML. And without the QML compiling support we had today, this all ended up as a rather slow and messy approach. And on top of it all, it didn't scale well when used on embedded hardware. So at one point, we had to rethink the, the whole solution. Uh, in Controls 2, we basically shifted most of the implementation from QML to C++. And we only left the delegates to be written in QML. Everything else, like API, control logic, event handling, and so forth, uh, is done in C++. Uh, this reduces memory footprint, gives an easier code flow, and will simply execute faster. We also use file selectors to help resolve the style, which means that we cut off another layer of indirection compared to Controls 1. And Qt6 will further improve on uh, the style selection uh, logic so that more can be done during compile time instead of runtime. Uh, but what has uh, really been missing in Controls 2 so far uh, is support for native styling. Uh, Controls 2 was really written to solve the situation on embedded hardware. And since we have widgets for desktop, we have sort of accepted the fact that Controls 2 has been a bit behind in that area. I mean, in the real world, uh, this boils down to human available human resources and priorities and not like of goodwill. But now that Controls 1, Controls 1 has been deprecated since uh, Qt 5.12 and will even be removed from the base installation with Qt 6, this is no longer really uh, acceptable. So what we have planned for the future is to do a major lift for using Controls 2 on the desktop. Uh, first of all, we need to offer native styles on both Mac OS and Windows. Uh, on Linux, uh, the Fusion style has been available for a long time already. And we know that users of Qt like to use C++. Uh, so in the near future, we also plan to open up and make the API for Qt Quick and Controls to public. We'll make use of the new property system in Qt 6 for creating bindings in C++ as a part of uh, this effort. But how the API will end up look like is a bit early to say. Uh, but it might mean being able to write controls application using C++ only, or at least uh, it will give you a proper API to interface with the controls from C++. In parallel to this, we need to provide more desktop-centric controls, uh, not only the ones uh, that we have in widgets today, like uh, doc widgets or MDI areas and such, but also native design patterns, uh, like a combined sign bar and toolbar on Mac OS, uh, or the ribbon on Windows, for example. And we need native dialogues and menus. Uh, we should do this by using the platform theme plugin like widgets do today, which means that uh, if a desktop already has a cute platform theme plugin written for widgets, it should continue to work also for controls. Um, so our first big goal is basically to let controls become a just as good alternative as widgets for doing desktop development and hopefully even better with time. Uh, but compared to widgets, there are a lot of things missing in controls. So, I mean, we have no illusions that this will be done in a day. With the current staffing, this will take some years. 
But to kick things off for Qt6, we have started by porting the existing Q style to Controls 2. Uh, I will talk a bit more about that in the next slides. We have also changed how the application style is resolved. Up till now, an application would always need to specify which style to use, otherwise you would get the default style. There are various ways of setting the style from using command line options uh, to using the C++ API. But from now on, if no style is specified, we will ask the platform team uh, which style to use in exactly the same fashion that we do with widgets. So if you're on Linux, the default platform team will return Fusion. And on Windows, it will be the Windows style. And because the default style will no longer be chosen by default with this change, the default style has also been renamed to basic style in Qt6. Work has also been done uh, for Qt6 to let us resolve more of the styling dependencies during compile time. For every style, you now have the option to specify the fallback style when the style is built. Uh, Mac OS style, for example, has the fusion style set as backup, as fallback, sorry. And the fusion style has the basic style as fallback. This way, every style has a dependency chain that is known already at compile time, which basically means less lookup of style assets during runtime. Um, to get native styling to controls, we use QStyle for drawing, uh, like several other projects has basically done before us, even our own project controls one. Uh, but where we differ now is that instead of sharing QStyle with widgets, we make an exclusive copy just for controls. And this might sound odd, uh, as some would say that uh, using just one implementation of QStyle would ease the maintenance burden between widgets and controls. But the reason we do this is twofold. Uh, first of all, we don't want to break widgets. And we cannot factor QStyle out of widgets without breaking the API. Not only has QStyle references to widgets in the public API, but it also uses enums and constants directly from the widgets themselves. So if we factored QStyle out to, for example, QGUI, we would break all the existing third-party styles out there and also risk, risk regressions for our own internal styles. And this would not be very welcome for users that value Qt stability over time. And the other reason for making copy is that we want the freedom to change the implementation wherever we see fit. I mean, there are many ways where we can optimize the Q style copy going forward to better fit the Qt quick scene graph and the controls to styling API. And uh, we want to be able to do so without being constrained or worried about keeping compatibility with widgets. Uh, I would also like to stress that we don't necessarily want the native styles to look exactly like widgets. In many cases, we would, for example, use a hybrid approach where we use QML to add more animations and fading effects on top of QStyle. I mean, what we really want uh, is for the native style to look as native as possible and not necessarily look like widgets. Um, so let's take a little look behind the scenes at the implementation. As said, we have copied QStyle into the controls repository, repository as you can see here uh, on the right side. This includes in this first version, mostly the same hierarchy of classes and tools that we have for widgets. Uh, but to avoid a name clash, uh, we have wrapped it all inside a namespace called Qt Quick Controls 2 or QQC2. On the left side of the slide, we have a QML control, uh, in this case, a comma box. All controls have a delegate property that takes care of rendering it. And uh, when a native style is used, the delegate will be an instance of a Qt style item. A style item is uh, simply a subclass of a Qt item uh, that draw, can draw any perimeter from QStyle onto a texture in the scene graph. I mean, it can be a combo box, a uh, button background, a slider handle, or in this case, a combo box. So let's take a closer look at the style item combo box in the middle here to see how an image is actually produced. First, it will get a call to calculate geometry from a Qt style item. Style item combo box will then use QStyle to calculate values such as the content margins, padding, and the implicit size of the control. This in return will be used by Qt style item up here uh, to create a Q image via QPainter and then call Paint event. Paint event will draw the control using QStyle. 
equal to have its own widgets. And when it's time for Kit Quick to render the combo box, the image will be converted uh, to texture and placed in the scene graph. Um, the style item will also get a call to calculate geometry at startup. Um, here we can set up all the necessary connections to the QML combo box, basically. And this will be used to detect whenever something changes, like if there's a mouse press in the combo box. And that will force the repaint, basically, of the texture. The result of all this can be seen here at the bottom. Note that we only we don't draw the contents here, we only draw the background. And this is a pattern that we use for all controls for several reasons. Uh, first of all, by not drawing the contents, we can reuse the same texture for all combo boxes. We just draw one small version of the background onto what is called a nine patch image, which can be scaled to any size. And then we can reuse it for all controls of the same type in the application. And secondly, we want to avoid drawing text using QStyle and QPainter, since we want all text in a QML application to be rendered the same way. Uh, mixing those two can uh, produce an inconsistent look, basically. Uh, to see how the contents are drawn instead, we need to take a look at the combo box here at the left. This is how a QML part of uh, a combo box looks like uh, on the inside. When you add a combo box to your UI from QML, this is the component that will be picked up by the native style and instantiated. Uh, the cryptic uh, t.combo box on top here is the C++ uh, base class that contains all the event handling and control logic that I briefly talked about in the previous slide, which you don't need to worry about uh, now. What you should focus on uh, are the delegates here. And the combo box has two of them, the content item and the background. The background is here an instance of style item combo box, uh, the one I talked about in the previous slide. Uh, the style item combo box uh, is, at the end of the day, a normal QML item that happens to draw itself using QStyle. And for the other delegate, the content item, uh, we just use a normal text field, basically. The implicit size of the content item here uh, is provided as input to the style item combo box. And it will use this information uh, to calculate the implicit size uh, of the background taking the content size into account. It doesn't draw the contents, but it needs to know the size to calculate the correct implicit size for the background as well. And then we'll let the implicit size of the background also be the implicit size of the whole control. And the result can be seen here at the bottom. Um, the slide has been uh, converted a little bit wrong here, but you can see at least the control down here. Uh, here we have a combo box with contents uh, with a scaled up nine patch background texture behind it which looks like it should uh, look. Uh, and by respecting the split between the foreground and the background, the application is free to override any of the delegates. And this goes for all styles, not only for native ones. Uh, in, the, in the application shown here, uh, we create a common box and assign in a custom content item with a green background, which you can see here. And this will basically override the default uh, foreground that was set on the previous slide. Uh, in general, we do recommend though that you either set both a custom foreground and a custom background, or none of them. Otherwise, you'll risk an inconsistent look if your app is supposed to run on top of different platform styles. Uh, as you might have noticed, uh, we're not coping the fusion style uh, from widgets. Controls 2 already has a fusion style, which is, uh, which is written in QML. Uh, we don't think QStyle is the best way to create the style for Controls 2 in general. It only makes, only makes sense um, when you need to use a native platform API to draw native controls and primitives onto images at runtime, basically. On macOS, for example, we use AppKit to draw NSLs and NSUs used to key images. If you don't use uh, any native APIs, you're actually better off drawing the images by other means or using QML directly, uh, like the Fusion style will do on, in controls. Uh, and that actually brings me to an important point. I mean, we don't only introduce a second API for styling in controls. It already has a great styling API from before. And we don't want to support and maintain a second styling API. 
So for that reason, the copy of QStyle will be a private implementation detail in the controls repo and not a public styling API for everyone to use. Okay, so uh, what about widgets? Uh, there might be somebody asking about that. Uh, what, was, what will this mean for widgets? And the short answer is uh, absolutely nothing. I mean, widgets will continue to be in maintenance mode as before, nothing will change. Uh, hopefully one day, uh, controls will be in such a good shape uh, that you will prefer using it over the widgets for your new desktop projects. But that will be up to you. We're not enforcing this on anyone. All right, uh, so in the end, I'm just going to show how uh, uh, application controls the application will look with the Mac stuff, where we are now in Qt6. I'll see if I can share my screen. <clears throat> Yeah, cool. All right, so this is a normal control to application with a tab bar and tab button and a lot of controls. So I can start this up with Fusion first, the Fusion style, which is already in controls too. Here it is, nothing spectacular. Test buttons, check boxes, radio buttons, pin boxes, text fields, text areas, Combo boxes and so forth. And now I can also start this up with Mac OS style. This. And here you go. Here we have the Mac style. Buttons, check boxes, radio buttons. I'm not sure if this come um, if you can actually see this over the video link, but uh, here you can see we're also fading the scroll bars, which you don't do for widgets. And this is a pretty easy thing to do in, in QML, right? So here we halfway draw the slider or the scroll bar uh, with Q style, and then we do some uh, extra top uh, logic on top to, from QML to make it fade in and out. Here we have the combo box. And um, you see, there, there's still some uh, drawing artifacts with respect to focus rects. We are going to work on those before the final release. So, this is a very beta state right now. All right, this is uh, all I got. Uh, I guess I have some time for questions too. Yeah, let's take it to Q&A then. If you click the shared notes on the sidebar, you will see uh, quite a few questions get up for you. Please um, answer any of them in the order you desire. Oh, okay, let's start from the top then. <laughs> okay, here on Plasma, we have our own platform style. What can we do for that? We would need to be able to implement styles for this Q-style Q style fork, yeah. That and that will you have to do anyway. I mean, even if we try to share Q styles with widgets and you have a third party style that works with widgets, I mean, in order for that to work, there cannot be any references to Q widget inside that style. Otherwise, you have to link your application to widgets like we do controls one. And we are not going to go down that route. We don't want the controls to application to we need to link the widgets. So we'll have to anyway refactor that style and remove all the notions of widgets out of it. And we don't think that is the right way to go for styling controls application to in the first place. We wanted to write the QML, using QML to write the style, that's what QML is great for. So, I mean, it's a pity, I would love that too, that you can take any third party style and just uh, make it work for controls as well. But that is not uh, going to work with this project. Okay, if, if I understood this question correctly. Um, I jumped to question two. Why QPainter? Aren't you throwing away all that one to just oh, GPU accelerated rendering? Yeah. I mean, the, the Q widget, uh, no, uh, Q image is only a temporary step. I mean, we create a Q image and we put a Q Painter on it because that is the API that Q style understands. It takes the Q Painter and it draws something somewhere. I mean, this can probably be optimized uh, away later, which is why I said we need to have the freedom to optimize this even further. But uh, currently, we just draw the control onto a Q image once, 
and then we convert it to a nine patch texture node in the scene graph. And from there on, it's uh, of course accelerated fully. Uh, all right, question three. Are there any plans to make Q2 controls to use proper windows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I said that on slide three or four. I mean, that's uh, that's some of the things we need to look at uh, very shortly, actually. And we need to use the platform theme plugin to create native dialogues and native menus. And uh, I don't know KDE in and out. I guess you have your own platform styling plugin that provides a native file dialogue and native style. Uh, t style name and so forth. And so it would be good if you can pick that up, that information, and we use it also for controls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is the motivation, right? We want to look, we ask QPA basically the same question like widgets do. I mean, which style does the, this platform prefer? If it's the Fusion style, it's another style. And we'll respect that, whatever it returns. And we will ask, ask it whenever we need to create a native dialogue. Um, or native menus or anything that uh, the team can provide. There is some text typing here at the same time, so. This, I mean, this, uh, I'm not sure which part you're asking now. The QPA stuff uh, is not, the, it's semi-public, it's not public for API. If you're talking about the Q style copy, the fork basically that we do in control, so that will not be public API now. Because as I said, we don't want to uh, introduce a second styling API in controls. This is not the motivation for us. We just want to provide native styling. And the low hanging fruit for us, how to do that is to just take what we got in Q style already and use that as a, as a drawing tool basically. So it's an implementation detail and we uh, we want to, I mean, Q style is inefficient in many ways, and it draws the background, it draws the foreground, it draws all the primitives, trim primitives like frames and styling rects and all those uh, separately. And for many things, like in in on the Mac style, you can draw the whole button in one go on the on the native platform. So Q style is not very optimized for how we want to, things to work in uh, controls, and for that reason, we need to have this freedom going forward now to to basically uh, chop out everything that is slowing us down and uh, things that we want to do differently. So this, we, want, we are not going to make this uh, public, no. Okay, um, I just, I think I jumped to question four now. How are we supposed to implement our own styles like Breeze, which is currently a Q style when it's private to I mean, if you want to implement the style for controls, do you need to use the controls to styling API basically? So, <clears throat> if you only have Breeze for uh, widgets right now, then you would need to implement Breeze in uh, using the QML styling API. This is not the answer for uh, for that part. Uh, what is the plan for Linux? That's question five. Um, I mean. When we started out this project, uh, we was all, we were also thinking about porting the Fusion stuff or for from Q uh, from Q style uh, on par with how we would port the, uh, the Mac style and Windows style. But then we saw that we already have the Fusion style and Fusion style in controls to actually look better. So the Fusion style is currently our answer to uh, to desktop styling for widgets, also for widgets. And of course, we will prioritize Linux uh, equal to Windows and Mac OS. So. Okay, question six, will text controls have context menu uh, like QtextEdit has? I mean, this is there are many controls um, missing in controls too. We have in widget today and likewise, there are many controls in controls too today that we miss in widgets, uh, like a range page slider, for example. And then there's a lot of controls that are missing in general from native platforms, like a search, search field. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, and many others that I'm popping to my head right now. So this is things we need to work in for the future. But we have a few people, this will take some time, but uh, surely this is what we are going to work on. 